Welcome to my lecture online. How do you make a phase shifter that gives you a 90 degree shift? Well, when you look back on the previous videos and you look at that simple phase shifter that we had, in order to accomplish that, we had to have a resistance that went down to zero and an X sub C that was basically the entire impedance. But then, if the resistance goes to zero, then you can't have an output voltage because there won't be any voltage drop across the resistor. So, how do you get to have a 90 degree phase shifter? You do that by adding two 45 degree phase shifters together. And so that's what this circuit is. Notice here, since the reactor capacitive reactance is the same as the resistance, this will give you a 45 degree shift, and this will basically give you a 45 degree shift, and now we put those together. Now, since they're put together like this, things are a little bit different. So you can't just automatically assume a 45 degree shift, a 45 degree shift, so the output voltage has a 90 degree shift. Let's go ahead and work through the problem. So what we're going to do first is find what V1 is equal to. In order to do that, we can see that the voltage is going to be dropped across this circuit right here relative to the voltage dropped across this capacitor. Because again, we're going to have a voltage divider. That means we need to know the impedance of this part of the circuit, and this is a parallel circuit because we have one branch going this way and the other branch coming this way. So to find the impedance, we need to do the following. We need to take the product and divide it by the sum of those two. So let's go ahead and do that. So the impedance is going to be equal to the product, so that means we're going to have a 50 ohm resistor on this branch, and then the sum of those two, so multiply this times 50 minus J50, and then we're going to divide that by the sum of the two, which is 50 plus 50 minus J50. So when we do that, we multiply this together, this gives us 2,500 minus J times 2,500, in the denominator, we end up with 100 minus J times 50. Now, in order to divide the denominator into the numerator, we need to convert that into the magnitude and phase angle format. So this is straightforward uh, for the magnitude. Well, that's 2,500 squared times 2, and then take the square root, which is 3,536. That's equal to 3,536, and the angle will indeed be a minus 45 degree angle. In the denominator, that's 100 squared, that's 10,000, plus 2,500. Take the square root of that, that gives us 111.8. 111.8 with a phase angle of, let's see here, that's a 0.5, take the phase angle, that's 26.57 degrees. That's a, that's a minus 26.57 degrees. So our impedance then becomes equal to, divide 3536 by 111.8, that gives us 31.63. See here, that's 31.63 with a phase angle of, that would be uh, minus 45 plus 26.57. That gives us 18.43. That's minus 18.43 degrees. And then let's convert that back to the real and imaginary portion because we're going to have to add it to this capacitor right here. So let's see here, we take uh, the cosine of that, multiplied times 31.63, that gives us exactly 30, oh that's kind of nice, so we get uh, 30 and then minus and 18.43, take the sine of that and multiply that times 31.63, we get exactly 10. Hmm, that's nice also. So minus J times 10. So this here is the impedance of this part of the circuit. So now what we can do is we have, let's see, we don't need to add it to that, but now we can calculate V1. Let's go ahead and do that. So V1 is equal to the input voltage V in times the ratio of Z divided by X sub C of this capacitor right here, X sub C. 
Oh, no, not x sub c. That would be the sum of the two. That would be the total. That would be z total. So z total would be z plus x sub c, which means we still need to find the total impedance of the circuit here. So z total is equal to z plus x sub c. z was 30 minus j10, and we're going to add to that, not multiply, but add, the capacitor reactance that which is minus j50 so that means the total impedance is equal to 30 minus j60 that needs to go into the denominator right here so this is equal to the input voltage times the impedance z which is since we're going to have to divide i'm going to put in this format 31.63 with a phase angle of minus 18.43 degrees divided by 30 minus j60 which of course we're going to have to convert also into that format so this is going to be v input times 31.63 minus 18.43 degrees and in the denominator let's see here we have 30 squared plus 60 squared Add that together, take the square root, which is 67.08. That's 67.08 with a phase angle of, that's 2, take the inverse tangent of 63.43 degrees. 63.43 degrees. And of course, that's a negative because we have a minus J60 there. So now we can divide the denominator into the numerator. I know this seems like a lot of work, but this is the only way to do it. So V1 is equal to V input times, so now we have 31.63 divided by 67.08. That gives us 0 0.47 with a phase angle of 18.43, that's negative, plus 63.43 equals, and that's exactly 45 degrees. We kind of expected that because we know that these values are equal, so we expected that to be a 45 degree phase shifter, and there it is. That's what we have. So the voltage at point one right here, V1, is equal to a, map, a magnitude of 0.47 times or 47% the input voltage with a phase shift of 45 degrees. So now what we can do is now we can say we have a voltage over here, and now we have a phase shifter over here. In other words, we're trying to take the voltage across here, which is going to depend upon what happens here. So then what we can do is the following. We can say that uh, V output is equal to V1 times the phase shift caused by the relative, uh, what we call relative resistance here or impedance there, that would be uh, the Okay, let me, let me try to regroup my words here. So, the output voltage here is equal to the input voltage, which is now V1 times the ratio of the impedance, in other words, the resistance of this resistor, that would be R, divided by the resistance of these two, or the impedance of these two together, which would be uh, X sub C plus R. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So, V1 is this right here. So that is equal to uh, V in multiplied times 0 0.47 with a 45 degree phase angle times the ratio of the resistance here, which is 50 with a phase angle of 0 degrees divided by the sum of these two, which would be 50 for the resistance minus J50 for the capacitor, which means we have to convert that one as well. So this is equal to V in times 0 0.47 with a phase shift angle of 45 degrees. And then this here, let's see, this would be 50 with a phase shift of 0 degrees divided by, this here will give us 70.7 with a phase shift of minus 45 degrees. And notice what this is now turning into. So we can say that the output voltage is equal to the input voltage times 0 0.47 with a phase shift of 45 degrees. 
And now the second part, when we take 50 and divide by 70.7, we get 0 0.707, 0.707 with a phase shift of 45 degrees. Now, the reason why I left it in this format is because this way we can see what's happening. So we have a V input right here, 40 volts at zero degrees. And then the first part of the circuit is a voltage divider. We have V1 here, so the voltage across here relative to what happens over here. That's determined, we determined that that was going to be 0.47 or 47% of the input voltage times a phase shift of 45 degrees. Then we take that voltage as the input voltage, and now we have this as a phase shifter. So that shifts it as well 45 degrees with a voltage change of 0.707. So the voltage drop again here is such that we only get 70.7% of V1 voltage coming out on the output voltage. Now all we have to do is simply multiply all that together. And so this is going to be equal to Vn multiplied times 0.47 times 0.707. So 0.707 times 0.47 gives us 0.332, or simply about 0.33. We'll do that. And a phase shift of 90 degrees. In other words, the way the circuit is set up like this, we get a 90 degree phase shift, and yet we get to keep about one third of the original voltage. 0.33, so actually it's 0.332, so that's really close to one third of, of the total voltage. So you could say that this is equal to one third Vn with a phase shift of 90 degrees. And since Vn is equal to 40 volts, so 40 divided by 3 gives us 13.3 with a phase shift of 90 degrees. And of course, that would be in terms of volts. So there you go, that's how you get a phase shift to give you a phase shift of 90 degrees, and yet you only, well, you lost two-thirds of your input voltage, but still, it's not zero, you get one-third of your, your uh, input voltage coming out on the other end. If you want to keep a larger portion of your voltage, then you probably need to do additional portions of a phase shift with smaller phase shifts added together so there's smaller drops and you get a larger and larger portion of your voltage coming out of the side and we'll show you some examples of that as well so that you're not forced and taking a big voltage hit on the output you can actually continue to do a circuit like this make it more complicated and get a better output a higher voltage output also with a 90 degree shift and that's how it's done